Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Druidic and unfortunately no PvP for you today. I'm making another follow up video on my last podcast because I did a lot of reading up and thinking about Star Wars World Republic's current state after expressing my thoughts. I was very broad and described ways to improve Star Wars but now I want to present a new thought I had and fleshed out. Is Bioware making a single player game? I know I'm not the first one to come to realize some of these aspects and I'm a bit late to the party on this one. I started thinking about this more as North America's best raiding guild source called Quits and that was over a month ago but as I said I'm a bit late to the party. Many people have criticized the direction Bioware was or is going in to such an extent that we have reached a point that it becomes dull and is completely void, it's empty of meaning. It's just beating a dead horse, repeating the same complaints about lack of content, class imbalance, etc. You, you heard it all, most likely. Although I am with you on some of these points, Bioware's policies are done with such deliberation and are so calculated that maybe there is more behind the veil of incompetence that many people call them out for. Bear with me here. In my last podcast I said sardonically that you could just milk the players, let them play through the game, make it as hard as possible for a non-paying player and lift off of the revenue that is generated through one-time subscriptions and cartel coin purchases. But I also said that nobody wants that. But what if? What if that is exactly what they want? What if they completely focus on the single player experience as opposed to working on the game mechanics and game content and classes? Because quarterly numbers mean more to EA than a healthy game with continued success. The thing about that is, from a sheer number crunching standpoint, the game is a success either way. It generates revenue. Its maintenance costs are covered. With the least possible amount of development crew available, you still lure in suckers to play the game for free and make money off of them. It doesn't matter how good the game is or how many players continue to play it, or for how long they play it. In the immediate sense, it generates the same or even more amount of revenue without any upfront investment needed to fix the endgame. All free-to-play content already exists in the game, needs no patching and has only very little maintenance and zero development cost, making it from a business standpoint the most viable model for a game. The game then does not require to be enjoyable in a long term sense for more invested players. It has the bare minimum end game content for your average Joe gamer who likes Star Wars, enjoys the video game once in a while and is more than happy to just start off all over again with leveling a new character for the next 6 months because he played through the game with his first character. If this were to be true, and I don't know that, this is just a compilation of thoughts I had regarding the game and its policies. And this really is the greater goal and deliberate direction of Bioware, then yes, in short terms it's a cunning business model, but in long terms it's an absolute failure. Let me demonstrate this proposed business model with these graphics. So here on the left hand side of my model you can see the intake of players, which is the starting planets and the general start of the game, and the right side which is the end game and the leveling process in between. So a player comes through all of this and maybe leaves in the end game because he's not interested. It's reasonable to assume that uh, during that process he at least subscribes once or leaves some money. Now to increase that intake of money you could of course increase your intake of players. So you could, you know, just find some ads online, you know, some, some banners, you know, play Star Wars now and you get more people through this process and more people leaving money. Uh, another way would be to, of course, make your end game more attractive, as shown here. So you have got more end game subscribers which continuously generate revenue. The best part of this system is that you still get these people who are just passing through the game and you have all of this revenue generated through these subscribers. In reality though, people leave the end game, they don't think it's interesting and it shrinks back again so you don't really have this big incentive to stay and play in the end game, which is where this model inherently fails. There even which was announced elongating the process of leveling from 1 to 60 or to 65 in this case um, with more story so there really isn't that much in the end game anymore because story is now the main appeal they have even said it story is the main appeal so 
this process gets longer and the end game the end game shrinks even more so everything that is left to do is just to simply pass through the game as seen here with this model the game completely denies itself growth because it cannot hold players in the end game at this point i want to get out of the accusatory mode and for once take this out of bioware I have no idea of the inner workings of Bioware, well, quite ironically nobody has because they don't talk to us, and thusly everything has been said about them, from alleged utter incompetence to deliberate maliciousness. I'm not affiliated with them, and the next part of what I'm going to say is speculation on my part and my interpretation of things, so no absolute truth, feel free to disagree with me, I am not special. I think they have genuinely tried to make the game better. I think they really tried, but they were limited either by the limited knowledge of MMORPG mechanics or by budget and development resources. They have a great art team and good designers, and more importantly they have the artistic vision to create good looking content, good looking animations, good looking environments. However, they don't work either mechanically or they go against the spirit of the game. What I mean by that is a few of the poor design choices made in how to best keep endgame players interested in the game, not by what would classically be referred to as content, you know, flashpoints, operations, war zones, dailies, etc., but rather with gimmicks like outfit designers, player housing, or new cartel packs. I'm really split on that one, because I don't know if and to what extent these poor choices were made out of ignorance or because they knowingly abandoned the endgame players in favour for implementing things that free-to-play players want to have, and therefore subscribing to the game for a short time. Also, focusing on these things to put first into the game makes great headlines to incentivize returning players to look at the game again. A conversation would typically go along the lines of, Has anything changed? I really liked Star Wars when it came out, but there wasn't enough to keep me playing. Now, people with an interest to get more players into the game, like me and other long-time subscribers, say, well, of course, there's Starfighter now, player housing, outfits are cool, free-to-play really helped the game with all of these new players. Then they look at it, are intrigued for, you know, two months, and then they leave again because of the lack of content. Everything that this game is featuring nowadays looks suspiciously like it is made and catered directly to incentivize the return of players, just to get them through the machine once more, just to spit them out at the end, leaving them feel dirty and empty. Okay, I may have gone a bit too far with that last analogy, but you get the point. First you headline your new features, then you abandon the players once they have paid for coming back and taking a look. I made a lot of suggestions on how to make the game better in my last podcast, the main aspect being bringing more variety into existing content, you know, new classes, server merging and so on. But you also have to realise how impossible it is to react to player feedback when you have little to no experience with it. Bioware is good at making single player games. What am I saying? They excel at it. They are marvellous. They make probably the best story driven single player games out there, maybe followed by Bethesda. But they probably didn't know how to cope with the massive cuts to their team, how to cope with the forum trolls, and how to properly interpret their feedback. You see, as a developer, you have to ignore certain feedback and people, because all they do is talk shit. I don't want to bash anyone in particular, but there is a certain neckbeard that quit Star Wars The Old Republic recently that was just horrible at expressing his opinions. Like a big portion of the player base, he was frustrated with certain aspects of the game. And like all too often, it just turned into mindless hate and bashing of the Bioware crew. What do you expect them to do exactly? Well, yes, my dear sir, you are absolutely right. We have had our head up our asses, haven't realized it, and thanks to your overly negative video, we are now going to make the game better, starting tomorrow. It's not exactly the most constructive way to go about it. Now, at first they tried to incorporate all feedback. Yes, very, very, very bad idea when the community functions in such a way as I just described. You see, some people, for example, religiously, zealously advocate against hacking players in the Star Wars PvP. I know for a fact that nobody is hacking and have yet to see a single hacker. The last one I saw was at level 50, that was you know, only twice and you know, back then with speed hacks. They have no idea of 
any class mechanics and when there's a small glitch or bug with the engine and the display of where players are in PvP, which happens often, believe me, they call out hacks. They are so certain about it, even as I discussed with somebody for 20 minutes and showed him exactly what happened and how I was immune to certain abilities and how to read it from my buff ball, he still believed, well, you're a good player, you aren't hacking, but I know for a fact that some of these pubs are hacking. So if you accept the failability of your player base and that you have to take every feedback with a grain of salt, also this video is no exception, I am also biased by what I have done and, and experienced in the game, I can't unilaterally talk for all types of players since I only represent a certain type of player. Then you start to realize that every outcry on the forums may be just a heap of ball. Maybe these players absolutely suck at what they're doing and you shouldn't listen to them. Hell, maybe Marauders didn't need a nerf in 3.0. Ever thought about that? Maybe you shouldn't have rendered a class that historically had its difficulties in staying on target in PvP impossible to play because some guy that doesn't use defensive cooldowns on the forums cried that he got globaled. But suddenly we drift into the next extreme where Bioware caught up on the fact that they can't really 100% of the time rely on the forum feedback, and they just stopped. That's right, no middle of the road, no we may need to take these top rated players or guilds impressions and opinions and topics into concern, nothing. Just sealed the vault, set it for nuclear catastrophe and Bioware sealed itself into their own think tank for the next 30 years to come. Nothing gets in anymore, and the only stuff that comes out is based on their data. Don't get me wrong, metrics when used correctly are an awesome, near-objective orientation on how to get feedback without relying too much on a vocal minority on the forums that just like to trash things and most likely don't know what they're talking about. But that is what it is. It's an orientation. You can't base all of your changes on metrics. Optimally, in an MMO, you should look at the general consensus the least, which tends to be the most unreliable, but still picks up on the biggest imbalances or missing features in the game. But you should still consider it. Compare it to your metrics, see if there is a mishap, and adjust accordingly. And lastly, but most importantly, ask your top PvE guilds, ask your top PvP players how they think about certain changes how they experience them on PTR, because they have probably played more of and possibly even know more about their classes than the respective game designers. This feedback is the most valuable if you strive to make a game to be played at the highest level. If you base all changes around how the very best people at the game play it, then that is what becomes the standard. Now everyone in your player base has to adjust accordingly to that standard and either invest more time into the game like the top players have, which is positive from a business standpoint, or accept that they aren't as good as them. In any case, this strive for greatness is the driving force behind any MMORPG. By looking at the data and adjusting things due to popularity, you essentially destroy this kind of incentive to get better at the game because you take into account and balance around all of these heaps of players that play the game but have little to no understanding of it. I would estimate around 80% of the typical MMO player base have a very limited understanding of MMORPG mechanics and getting better at them is part of the journey, it's part of the fun. So what does that leave us with? As I said, it's an incredibly thin path to walk as a game dev to understand the feedback and ignore the trolls, but somehow filter it and properly interpret it in relation to your metrics. It's a very tall order and not for one second do I blame anyone at Bioware not being able to do it correctly. There are just times where you have to look at 80% of your casual player base and say, no, this is how it's going to be, you don't know what is good for you, you need this in your game, you don't know it yet, but when these changes are in play, you are going to enjoy the game. And other times where you just have to listen to what people want, 
what they wanted from the game since day one, and what they always will want, that have no detriment to the game at all, and would just generally be appreciated. Just from the top of my head, I could already think of tons of things, you know, server merging, customizable floating combat text, PvE guild leaderboards, dueling area on the fleet, cross-region rated PvP, and, you know, the list just goes on. So, to decide when to do what and have a 100% success rate is, as you may have guessed, impossible. The vision of the game designers and the way that players are playing the game will always, to some extent, differ. There's no way around it. World of Warcraft is getting a lot of flack lately because of their design choices. In this industry, a good game development studio defines itself over how often the vision and the players are congruent. It's always going to be a game of hit and miss, but in the good games, the hits are awesome and are remembered for years to come, and the misses are, albeit disappointing, not too bad. An example, not making we want to unsub the game. With Star Wars, we had a lot of misses lately. And now, to come full circle and discuss whether or not these misses were deliberate, let's look at the evidence. If they are actively making Star Wars The Old Republic into a single-player game, what would we expect? Of course, single-player related content. What would we see less of? High-end, high-time investment, high-reward, end-game content. We would see less things that have to be done exclusively in a group, and more things that cater to the average solo player. So, starting off last year we have the Starfighter, which is inherently multiplayer, and I wouldn't constitute as the point where they went for solo. Yet. So, along comes player housing and the Conquest update. Okay, we're getting there, housing is almost exclusively single player, but there was also Conquest, which made guilds play more active and invest more time into path content, such as old heroic foreman quests, mob and farm grind on leveling planets, which perhaps, even though it thoroughly failed in the long run, was devised to be a new long-lasting source of guild content to do during the farm stages of PvE content. So I give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Now we dwell into more clear examples of single-player content. Solo flashpoints. Now don't get me wrong, I very much like not having to wait with my mandatory 5 flashpoints I am assorted with and forced to do during the leveling from 55 to 60. But these solo flashpoints are a solution to another problem the game has during these stages, and a bad solution as I might add. So firstly there is underpopulation, which is why you and I all appreciate the solo flashpoints. But secondly, they are being made mandatory because they wanted to stretch out the leveling experience and draw it out for longer than there was content for. Instead of a bigger Yarvin or Rishi, we get to do existing flashpoints in a solo mode. Why not make them optional? We could have easily have the main storyline being told without having to enter Blood Hunt or Battle of Rishi, although I have to admit this one is kind of important for story progression. But have an NPC give us this as an optional, non-abandonable side quest that at some point in the future we have to do if we appreciate the space in our quest log. But here's a twist. You can only do the flashpoint in a group, as this is what flashpoints are intended for. It's a very bad choice to say, Whoa, players today aren't being able to do much group content. Instead of incentivizing group play, we better further discourage it by mandatory solo flashpoints. Also, content repetition. There is good and there is bad. The good one is recycling old level 20 to 40 instances and giving them a new flair, a new difficulty and perhaps even an extra boss. The hard mode level 55 flashpoint recycle was heavily criticized, but I see it as a prime example as to how content should be recycled. Of course, recycling content will always yield negative opinions, but to be fair, who was doing them on level 20 anyways? They had some perfectly good flashpoints that nobody went into, so of course it was a good and logical step to just buff them up a bit, make them shiny and have us do them again on level 55. 
Now, I don't know how you stand on your stamina when it comes to repeating content, but I cannot and will not enter Assault on Typhon or any of the Lana Banico flashpoints after doing them at the end of 55 on the ridiculous difficulty of Tactical. Doing them again on 14 different characters in solo mode whilst leveling, and then doing them again on Heroic to gear my ults. Something I will never do again, by the way. It's way easier to just use the 178 blues you get from questing and running story mode with them. With the heavy focus on story and lack of proper boss mechanics, they are inherently designed to be non-repeatable content. They are meant to be played once or twice. They are meant to be played in solo mode. The Yavin storyline. Why don't raiders get to kill Revan? Why do we fight his machine, but get to kill him solo with the help of all the not so well fleshed out characters of the main storyline? This would not stand in any other MMO, killing your main antagonist after you do 6 dailies. It's a choice, you can either select to go to the Temple of Sacrifice and raid to unlock the ending cinematic of killing Revan, or you could just do six dailies, on your own. Simple, you have qualified to kill Raven in one of the most appalling events ever to be conceived by man. Gee, we have to make Raven epic as fuck, but how do we do it? Lots of HP! Every boss has lots of HP! Well guess what, you fucking numbnuts, because it takes a group to kill them, not an overbuffed player character that literally cannot die, surrounded by a circle jerk of NPCs wailing away at Raven in the most underwhelming fashion imaginable. It wouldn't even be so bad if you could just go AFK until it's over, but no, we need the help of our revered hero, literally the most powerful Sith and the most powerful Jedi of their respective orders are pinned down by a whim of Revan's fingers, while you get to run around collecting orbs like a retarded version of Red Riding Hood. I'm sorry, I had to get that out of my system. But as you can see, it is single player content at the expense of a lot of opportunities to better stage Revan's defeat as a reward for completing the current raiding tier. The most prolific single player content that really made me think about all of this and really got the discussion started for most of the people is the planet Zyost. I liked it. I liked it very much. But I couldn't help but realize as I was doing it for the first time that I thought, gee, this is a grand scale. A lot of development costs went into this. A surprising amount of cost. It looks really good. Really good. And my initial reaction was very positive. Hey, maybe all of this is going uphill if they even have resources to stage something simple as this very thin, you know, story progression. So epically, maybe they have finally generated enough revenue and they can make the game better. This initial thought of mine immediately turned sour as I came to realize that this is most probably the only thing we are going to get for the next four months or so. And the happiness turned into cynicism, as I thought, well, how nice of a raid could they have possibly made with all of what went into Zyast? Certainly a quite epic one, I presume. They even scrap 70% of what they have done, because it becomes inaccessible after the story progresses. So they sacrifice something I presume to be around half of their budget on an inaccessible area, only to progress the story. I think that's very impressive, and I would certainly commend that, if I could expect anything else to come besides that. As a standalone, it holds nothing for me. Sure, I can enjoy it maybe 5 times, and would probably do it around 40 times with all of my characters because of the monolith raid accessibility, but apart from that, it's not what will keep me playing in 2 months. And now for the biggest smack in the face. The E3 reveal of, drumroll, nothing but story. And I understand that everybody is being hyped up by it right now. Really, I get you. But the thing is, you are hyping an aspect of the game that should have been there in the first place. If anyone remembers as this game came out, 
It was the game's main feature to have this engaging world and intricate player storyline, which they just completely dropped under the wheels in subsequent expansions because of what I presume to be a lack of funds. Now they bring it back to the table, damn right, I am happy too. But there's literally nothing else. As a side feature, this would be would have been awesome. But story as the main feature? We know where that went at launch. 60% of the players left the game because they had played through it. I delayed the making and the release of this video after hearing the announcement for the reveal. And boy was I right to include this here. All of my thoughts which I had formulated before the reveal could have been overthrown simply by putting in content. Any content. PvP or PvE. But they didn't. All of my fears could have been shattered by a simple investment in long-lasting, joyous gameplay. But they didn't. They could have even hired someone competent to properly format their reveal announcement text on the homepage. But they didn't. This just nailed them the notion that this game is forced in this direction, at the latest from this expansion and onwards. This really begs the question, have they knowingly and willingly already given up on us? Because from an outside standpoint, this is what it looks like, and the only thing I can come to a conclusion to. You can't tell me they don't know. How many times have the pressing concerns of this game been brought up? It's numerous times, countless times. And even though it's hard to properly integrate player feedback into your game, you can't tell me they don't know that a majority of their player base longs for more. Looking from this perspective, every piece of the puzzle fits. PvP is being made more accessible in 3.3 so that casual players don't have to PvP as much. Don't get me wrong on that one, I'm all for lowering the threshold of entry level PvP gear, but the best in slot gear for less? I, why? Why would they need it? I mean, they can, if they want it they can play more. They have already gotten the normal gear for a cheap price, but you know. They, the complete and total silence from Bioware. Now, nothing comes out of them unless they absolutely have to. Many people have attributed this to EA's policies, having the highest risk aversion, to rather not say anything to avoid backlash. But another possible interpretation is by when knowing that they are milking the players, and they don't want to lie to us, so they rather you know, don't say anything. Well, don't put on your tinfoil hats yet, I'm just saying it is possible and it makes sense in this context. Also, actions speak more than words, so looking at what has been released so far, and what has been announced, we have single-player content and resources devoted to in-game transactions and returning players instead of making the experience for the existing ones better. I really don't know to what extent this is true or not. I don't know to what level these kind-hearted and talented artists and coders are putting in a true effort in making the game better, and to what extent the corporate body of a money-making machine that Bioware in one way or the other represents makes decisions for these people, for the players, overrules any concerns for longevity, just looking to make a quick buck. The lines are blurry and the only people that have the absolute truth about this are currently silent. and watching our self-governed community regulate or not regulate itself. For me personally, I can just say the following. I don't want to play a less customizable, less immersive version of KOTOR and pay 13 bucks per month to, for being able to do so. I love this game. I love the potential it has. One thing that will always make it special for me is that it is, in its purest form, Star Wars. No good mechanics and no perfect gameplay of any other MMO will be able to contest that I love to block things with my lightsaber or shoot things in a flurry of bolt from one of my tech characters. But on the same note, not having the good gameplay or the sufficient numbers of players are also making me not want to continue playing, because this game is at its core an MMO and not a single player game, 
and has to be treated as such in the development cycle. Anyways, these are my fears and concerns for the current direction Star Wars The Old Republic is going into, and I would like to hear what you think. Do you like it the way it is? Do you think Bioware is our evil overlord willingly sacrificing young innocent acolytes in an obscure blood ritual in order to generate more cartel coins? Or do you think we have a case of misguidance in the development team? Also, why did Eric Musco make the other devs and writers put him into the game? Sure, he could have been a character somewhere, but I wouldn't base an expansion on him. Also, this and that. This is every possible joke you can make with this. You're welcome, Internet. Again, sorry for doing another one of these videos. I tried to keep this one shorter and more concise, and I will of course continue with regular PvP content on this channel. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. My name is Andrewdick, you've been watching PvP, and as always, have a good one.